Comedians and cabinet ministers. <laughs> some people call me Sergeant Dola, some people call me Jojo Joke. My real name is Su Haimi. I hope you remember that, Su Haimi. Because recently I met one very old auntie in Sekak. She came up to me and said, Hey, I know you. Can take water? Tsunami? <laughs> I said, Tsunami? Hello, auntie. Which part of you look like tsunami? <laughs> you want to see my ring of fire? It runs through the back here in between my two tectonic plates. <laughs> That's okay. Lah. Don't blame her. Lah. She don't know anything. That's why I'm here to actually share with you something about myself. Lah. Okay, first, I came from Montfort School. You know, all the sons of Montfort School ever... Okay, you don't even know my school exists. <laughs> It's a neighborhood school that only became good when the government now say that every school is a good school. <laughs> <laughs> but I still don't understand why my school last time wasn't a good school. I mean, our school motto was in Latin, okay? Same like Raffles Institution. Our school motto was also in Latin, why? Right? Raffles one is Aush Kosh Bagosh, <laughs> which means you look good in white. Our school motto is Age Kot Agis. Thanks to Wikipedia, only now I know what it means. It means, wake up your bloody idea. <laughs> yeah. So back in school, I, I used to hang out with the mud rock. You know, I wanted to mix with the Abe, But they say, I don't look like Lin Yubing. <laughs> you been in the house, ah? Huh? Oh, wow. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Yeah, there you go. Shine bright like a diamond. <laughs> along with the mud rock and the mud rock actually taught me one very very important punctuation mark every sentence they say must end with sial <laughs> yeah. if, don't get me wrong huh? sial is actually not a bad word in english it means unlucky chinese says sway indian say abatu meradil jagat satuna hekya kalau hekya so according to the mud rock, if you see a beautiful girl, like the one in front here, you know, uh, to you, <laughs> you don't say, wow, that girl very beautiful. No, you must say, wow, that girl very beautiful. See her? <laughs> and then if you're angry with someone and you don't know how to describe this person, you just go like, lu, macha musiao. Yeah, so it's just an expression, you know. It doesn't matter whether you feel lucky or not lucky, you just say see at the end of the sentence, it makes you feel complete. <laughs> just like chili sauce, la. you know, you need anything, you just put the chili sauce and then the food feels complete. So, Sial is the chili sauce and the chili sauce is Sial. <laughs> so, in the course of my work, I do voiceovers and I really cannot stop imagining what if the Mud Rock has to do voiceover for some Hollywood movies. I guess Optimus Prime will sound like, Before time began, there was the cube, Sial. <laughs> Make a try will be like Prime, you fight for the weak sound. You are with the weak sound. And Tom Baby will be like, Look, I am your father, Lassia. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. No Mark Rock is gonna do any voiceover for any Hollywood voiceover. They just leave that behind. Okay, so yeah, back in school, back in school, uh, during my time, you know, I'm so old when I say during my time. <laughs> during my time, activities outside of class is known as extracurriculum activity or short ECA. Uh, what do they call it now? CCA. CCA. CCA, yeah. What does CCA stand for? Co. Conquer. Conquer. What kind of activity you do nowadays? <laughs> 
Okay, but during my time it was called ECA. So what was my ECA? I was in the school gymnastics. <laughs> well, you laugh, I slap your face. Like, well, I, <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, 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 okay. Joking, joking, joking. Huh? I wasn't part of the school gymnastics. If I were part of the school gymnastics, I'd probably be the ball. <laughs> so I'm not a sporty type. I don't play sports. And I also don't understand why people play sports. Uh, my pursuit was more brainy. You know, I have to do something that made me look smart because I'm Malay, right? So, <laughs> I, did, yeah, I took part in the school debating team. Yeah, yes, yes, I was a school debater. In fact, I was doing it for so long, you can even call me a master debater. <laughs> even at this age, I still master debating. <laughs> I must have been myself and I must have you. Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you, don't understand me. Huh? The feeling of master debating is damn shock, you know. When I say, uh, Steve Kodo, Sion. Uh, okay, Kodo means frog. So for Chinese people, uh, Steve Kodo doesn't mean the frog that you steam and then after that you eat with uh, soy sauce and ginger. Uh, not that one. Uh. In Malay, Steve Kodo means the frog. Shock until steam. Uh. <laughs> I got distracted with this Kodok thing. Right? Okay. So back to my master debating. As a master debater, I usually have a very full grip on my argument. Right? <laughs> and I owe my master debating skill to my form teacher, Mr. Chu Chen. <laughs> yeah, he was my uh, master debater mentor, so out of respect, I call him Pak. So Pak Chu Chen taught me how to do it. To Pat Ruching, thank you. <laughs> in, fact, in fact, I invited him to come and watch uh, Happy Ever After. La. So I called him last night and I said, Are you coming? Are you coming? He said, Sorry, I cannot come. I can't come. He said, Okay, what about your wife? He said, My wife can come, but she come alone, not fun. <laughs> Maybe he's too old for this kind of thing. La. That's why he cannot come. La. It's okay, I mean, life goes on. So, uh, up to school, I didn't know what to do in my life. You know, I mean, nobody knows what to do in their life when you're a teenager, right? But I clearly remember Pat Chang's words of wisdom. He said to me very clearly, he said, You start small, and then you slowly, slowly grow big. <laughs> so here I am. You know, Singapore's biggest celebrity. I appear mostly on TV, that's why every year, Every 3D model gets bigger and bigger. Some TV even become more curved, you know, got to follow the contour. Yeah. And I always get this when I meet people outside. They say, hey, how come you are so on TV? I didn't know you are so, uh, so big. I say, you mean fat? No, no, I mean uh, so uh, big. I say, of course, I mean to weightlifting. I lift my own weight. Some skinny people, when they're done with the workout, they lift their weight at the gym, I carry my home. Yeah, I mean, Hey, come on. I mean, if you're fat, you just say fat. Lah. Ah, don't have to be shy. You know, some people are so shy to admit they're fat. They don't say they're fat. They say, I'm not fat, I'm just big bone. Big bone? What did you do last time? Dinosaur. <laughs> what did call you? Fatasaurus. Oh, I know dinosaur. I know dinosaur. Ah, the point is, it's okay. Don't have to worry. Don't worry. Because you know I'm all about the bitch. Not the bitch. No travel. Yeah. That's alright, so bad people in the house. Tonight, this very moment, we'll start the movement, we'll start the revolution. I'm here to speak on behalf of the fat people. Yeah, thank you, one fat people so far. Okay. <laughs> Next time, be more discreet, don't shout. People know you're fat already. It's alright, it's alright. Okay, I'm gonna speak, but never mind. Anyway, I'm gonna speak for all the fat people. You know, to me, this whole thing is just a big misunderstanding. Fat. It's just the past tense of fit. <laughs> so, if you have somebody to talk to you and say, hey, let me go exercise, let me get fit, we tell them, been there, done that. <laughs> and fat people, they're very tough people, you know, they're very resilient. I'll give you an example. If Kuma were to fall down this stage, she would bring his one eye, fall down the stage, I just bounce back. <laughs> And fat people, they're very peaceful people. You know, I've never seen violent fat people. Have you ever seen fat people fought a war? Sergeant, Sergeant, 
Can we attack McDonald first? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen fat fighter pilots? Hey, uh, what's the control stick? Uh? <laughs> uh, down there, down there. So they talk about my buckle there. Eh? Fat suicide bombers? They won't explode. They just boom. <laughs> In fact, let me tell you, without fat people, health promotion board got nothing to do. They say, not I say, they say, seven out of ten Malays are fat. I'm one of them. I don't know the other six. Because we never share our food. And they say, if you are fat, you're most likely to have diabetes. So the research also says that most Malays are not even aware they have diabetes. How come? Uh? Let me explain. <laughs> diabetes in Malay is known as kencing manis. Translated literally means sweet pea. Okay, how many of you taste your own pee? <laughs> the Malays cannot taste their own pee because it's not halal. <laughs> That's why we don't know we can have diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> and when it comes to heart disease, the Malays have surpassed the Indians. Hey, look on the bright side. At least we want something, Lass, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> you can take away our land, but you can never take our disease. <laughs> okay, la, okay, la. the truth is this. Huh? Okay, our health condition becomes like this because we Malays, we eat the breakfast of champions. Oh, you know, nasi lemak, alamak, rice cooked in coconut milk, deep fried fish, deep fried chicken, deep fried egg. The only fiber you can find in that breakfast is the banana leaf wrapper. <laughs> Okay, early this year, Time magazine called Nasi Lemak Healthy Breakfast. Bodoh punya Americans. Macam sial. Hey, kalau nak tengok aku macam sial lah. And and in April, Chan Kui Tiao made it to BBC's top 10 healthy dish. This is what I call no pay, Chan Kui Tiao. So the Malays called the Americans, the Chinese called the British, so now them only our Indian friends, huh? Ah, uh, got to wake up your idea that day, huh? Okay, um, I think you need to do something. I think our Indian friends need to export roti prata to France. Because when India goes to France, then we can call it Delhi France. 